What's up, YouTubers? This is your guy, Mr. Evaluator, and today we are going to go over the meaning of what it means is to take things out of uh, order, to take things out of context. So usually when you're taking things out of context, you're basically misinforming um, the actual definition in the context. Like if you would have basically read a word out of a dictionary and pretty much misuse misuse that word by applying your own analogy or your own logic with it you're basically you know taking that sense out of the context so that's what it yeah so that's what it means uh to really misuse information okay so um and you have a lot of people that do that so for those of you who want to know why am I or pretty much any other YouTubers uh, misuse information? Well, let me just, no, 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 forget about I said that. So let me point out the people that is actually accusing me of misusing information, right? And I'm going to prove to you guys that these people are misusing information. All right. Yeah are basically misinformation. Uh, yeah, they're using misinformation to their subscribers and their users. This is not a back and forth thing that you go with other YouTubers. Sometimes I just let it go and just don't even worry about it. Um, I'm not going to be on here long. I uh, got stuff to do. So meanwhile, let me just go on and break this down. Okay, so Maxwell, uh, the scribble knot guy, right? Uh, he has a magic notebook, whatever he writes, he actually, he basically, whatever he writes, it comes, it comes to life. It gets created to life. Okay. And so usually when you, when you, uh, when you see stuff like this, because he doesn't basically die in the game or, you know, when he, yeah, he doesn't die in the game or. You know, he doesn't stop anybody else or nothing. Well, I'm just saying the guy doesn't die in the game, so he still lives. Uh, it kind of makes him immortal. Okay, so when you take that character, uh, since he never dies in the game, uh, he doesn't die in reality. You know, that's that's like you're taking, oh, uh, since Dante dies and Devil May Cry, he could die in reality. I mean, that's just a load of crap. I mean, Dante, <laughs> it's unbelievable. Okay, so that's what you use. Like, it's a video game. Nobody's not going to play a video game that you actually don't die in. You know, and that really doesn't have no thorough storyboard. You know, unless you're just doing something just to get by, you know. And, like, that game just pretty much doesn't have a, you know, ending but it really actually does because um in Scribble Knots Unlimited, um, I don't know about the very, very first game, but it says that Edgar is the father of um Maxwell and his one sister. Okay. And so before that, his grandfather, okay, his grandfather and his well, not his grandfather. I don't know why they called him his grandfather, but his father, right, uh, was a architect. Okay, so the people that claim Maxwell to be a omniversal character is absurd because it tells you in the story that Maxwell had a dad and a mom that were architects and they traveled all across the entire world looking and collecting and finding artifacts they went places people that was that people has never been to you know place forbidden places they actually went there and like found um all types of artifacts so they had 42 children okay so he got married with his mom and bam, you know, they had 42 children, actually 44 kids. OK, and Maxwell and Lily was one of the two. Lily was giving a globe 
that basically could travel, could take you anywhere around the world. Not the solar system, not the galaxy, not the universe, anywhere around the world. So if she were to go into Marvel MCU, she will go only around the plane of that Earth. She can't go to another reality. She can't jump into a different reality. She can't go back in time. It's just a globe that allows her to travel around the world. She can't travel time. She can't go out the solar system. And she can't go through another plane of reality. So, like, that even confirms what I said from the beginning. Maxwell's universe is like a grain of sand compared to the DC, DC reality and Marvel's reality. Okay? So, because she was given a globe that takes her around the world. And that globe does not, like, it's just a globe that goes around the world. They don't go to different realities or different timelines or anything. They It doesn't. It's just a globe that goes around the world. Okay? And so Maxwell was given the incredible magic notebook. Okay? So for the sake of those who claim Maxwell is immortal, I'm going to stick with the highball. He's immortal. His family is immortal. So pretty much Maxwell... Uh, and his sister went out, you know, whatever he writes in that notebook comes to life. So basically he and his sister went out and, uh, you know, they met an old man who asked them for some food or whatever it is. And he just got nasty and he wrote or gave him a rotten apple. And so when the old man ate bit of rotten apple, he spit it out and he cursed his sister. So now uh, the old man cursed his sister and his sister was going to turn into stone. Okay. Maxwell should have been to stone, but instead it was his sister. So uh, when he, when his sister was getting ready to turn into stone, Maxwell said, you know, went to his uncle's house or whoever house he went to. You know, and he told him that uh, he had to collect star rights, which basically, I don't know, kind of cures his sister of her curse. So he said, from then on, everywhere I go around the world or around the planet, you know, I can. I'm going to go find the different. I'm going to go get good deeds. So the kid went out and he started doing good deeds for people and he started earning the star rights and the star rights basically restored his sister. So come to be at the end of the game that the old man that cursed his sister was his dad. So it's almost like that you claiming that this guy's omniversal and his dad was the one that possibly set those artifacts in place. Like literally his dad was the one that set all those artifacts in place or whoever it was, you know, because his family, the old disguised old man was, you know, his dad disguised as an old man. So these artifacts were set in place by people. Um, and pretty much the magic notebook was one of those artifacts that was pretty much given to Maxwell. So whoever possessed it, possessed. And that's a, that's, that's the dark history of scribble knots. Like, there was somebody else that possessed the poison, I mean, that magic notebook before Scribble Knot. I mean, before Maxwell. So, anyways, um, this magic notebook, and, and from the video game, from, from the clip of the video game, it looked like that Lily had a magic notebook as well. But, however, um, th at the end of the game, it was their dad that wanted to teach them a lesson to be good to people. So in this, in this scenario, uh, it says on fandom and Wikipedia that Maxwell can create his own world. He can create his own reality, you know, from out of that book, because here's the common basis of the book, whatever he writes in that book can pretty much come to life. So if he like literally writes, um, his own world. I mean, I, I'm not sure how he can put it pretty much write that in words, 
because that's a lot of writing. And plus, he's a kid. So, I mean, like, like if he want to, like, literally make his own reality, he's going to have to really do a lot of thinking. But anyways, man, the main point is the kid is not omniversal. OK. OK, so uh, he is sticking with a highball. He is immortal, but he's not omniversal. So the thing about this magic book is, in case you may wonder, Mr. Evaluator, can this magic book affect Superman? Can this magic book affect Batman? Can it uh, affect Thor? Well, when, when you look at it, this magic book, according to the game, whatever is written in it comes to life. And with the first game, it was said that some guy in a debate said that he can make somebody weak. He can make somebody strong. This is this is where you stick it within the context. Any character that he write in his book, he can make weak and strong. OK, and he can basically oh, any character that is not in his book, you know, that he didn't create, he can kind of make weak and strong, but it's still in his universe. So in actuality, if he was to cross over with Batman, Superman, or Wonder Woman, and he was to make them weak, I don't think he would affect them. But let's give it a highball. Let's just say it'll affect them. Okay? So you do know that when Superman gets weakened by Kryptonite, like, he does, he has layers of his power you see what i'm saying there's layers of his power that he can pretty much go to man like you know kryptonite is just the shoreline that weakens superman and like as many as times as you basically seen throughout the video i mean actually throughout all the the dc uh shows that when lex luthor came in with all that kryptonite and he shot supergirl with the kryptonite and he shot he kept punching superman with all that kryptonite in him and eventually once what happened what what um batman thought well once superman thought lex luthor killed batman this was in batman superman public enemies once he realized that you know he thought he killed batman like he overwhelmed the weakness in that kryptonite and just finished lex luthor like what are you talking about he literally finished lex luthor with kryptonite so that basically goes to show you kryptonite does affect superman and does make him weak yes it does but in that show because superman cares so much about batman and all of his friends he literally overwhelmed that uh super yeah he literally overwhelmed that um crypt kryptonite so more than likely if he was if this child was going to make superman weak He'll basically amp amp his powers, man. You know, if he was to, if the child was to pretty much, like, lower the heat in the sun or, you know. I mean, it's, it's just, it really revolves around the magic book. And if he was going to make Batman weak, Batman still has his strategies. Let's just say he's going to make Batman below, you know, not even able to hold t two pounds in his hands. You know, in this case, Batman still has magical spells and he could just pretty much silence that book. And he has a lot of other spells to basically rejuvenate his strength all the time. This basically even also explains, you know, why Batman is able to cheat death and do the stuff he basically does. Because, like, sometimes they don't show you in the DC comics that he uses it. They don't show you in the shows that he uses it. But he does use most of the magic if it's necessary but if it's costing something he's not going to use it and he's just going to allow his body to heal on its own so batman is not a predictable character but however maxwell is and stepping foot in the dc universe with that magic book will literally make every movement every sight of notation this kid does predictable to Batman, to Superman, to basically everybody in the DC universe. I mean, like, this is what happens. Like, he can do this, he can do that, but he won't have any time to do any of that. 
in case his sister's with him and she takes the globe and they teleport somewhere else well that they don't know about i mean he could just be like okay so i last saw batman in gotham so now i'm all the way over here in australia so let me make batman weak oh batman's been affected oh so that means they're somewhere around the globe okay flash run at your top speed and see if you can find them kids bam 400 times faster than light speed right before you know it Bam! He sees the kids, take the book out of his hand. Zatanna comes, rejuvenate Batman, and just silence the book. Okay? Silence the book and send Maxwell and his little sister back to the universe. So when we're talking about when we're talking about him crossing over to other universes, I mean, bro, it's not gonna work, bro, because him going like i said maxwell universe is like a grain of sand compared to marvel dc and dragon ball z and my hero academia why because we're talking about power scaling maxwell does not have a power scale bro that book does not have any scale of power it's just a magic book that basically whatever you write can pretty much come to life if you write something big humongous and huge you can literally write it so it doesn't mean that if he wrote outer space if he said outer space on planet earth i mean i, I don't know how that's gonna look that that's weird but anyways he can make outer space with oxygen okay but he could write outer space with oxygen and that outer space to have oxygen but you know literally that'll be catastrophic and like who who knows what will happen to the whole entire solar system you know who knows what will, will happen to the whole universe if he did that but anyways um the magic book does not have any scale to any scale of power and even if he used this magic book to, on trigon it's not going to affect trigon because trigon's power is literally immeasurable and because we're dealing with magic, uh, Trigon is the god of magic. I mean, like, he practiced all sorts of magic, man. And there's not one slick of sin of magic he doesn't know about. I mean, let alone Felix Faust, Lex Luthor. He, like, everything this child does is just very predictable to Lex Luthor. And... You know, Batman could just pay John Constantine a visit or Dr. Fate. I mean, if these guys can like literally like when it comes to magic and according to the DC universe, magic has scale. This magic doesn't have no scale. So, I mean, if he wanted to be like he can make himself, he can literally make himself omniversal in that book. Okay, he isn't omniversal according to the game, but he can make himself omniversal. So he will be above the the god in his universe, and he would like literally be his own god. So he will find no need of the magic book, anyways. Pretty much like on Wonder Woman 1984, when the guy took the wishing stone and said, I want to be the stone, and he became the stone. So all of those wishes that he was granting and actually, you know, coming to life and everything he was saying was actually becoming a reality was a cost of something. And it just literally, it, it just came to be, you know, and like he had no use of the stone anymore because he was the stone. So pretty much like the magic book, once he wishes that he's an omniversal being, he will find no need Okay, no need for that magic book whatsoever. So from here on in, whatever he thinks will make him like will come to an existence. And it goes back to what I said in the beginning. Whatever he think in his mind will come into existence, but it will be in his image. It will be in his image from his perspective, from his universe. When he sees Flash, He's going to make his flash and his flash is going to be made in his image. It won't be the actual flash in the DC universe because that flash in a DD, it, uh, DC universe is at uh, what what you call it? A uh, three dimensional, uh, 40 dimensional. 
40 dimensional. So let's just give it a high ball. He'll like clearly make that flash 40 dimensional. So he'll give the exact copy of that flash in that universe, but he won't have all of the actual abilities unless flash basically shows him and tells him. So let's just say he says, um, uh, he makes himself the wisest person in the universe. He can look at you, right? Okay, so, and know everything about you. So he looks at Flash and knows everything about Flash, knows his speed, knows his past, knows everything. So let's just give it, let's give it a highball. Let's just say he makes himself like Flash, right? Okay, so the minute he runs to the DC universe, he's going to have to balance. But let's just say they're fighting outside of creation. Flash is going to run to the concept of speed, okay? And basically... In this battle, running to the concept of speed and him being omniversal and being like Flash himself, he too will run to the concept of speed. Like, but that'll be to the concept of his universe. And pretty much, like, he has no control over time. Let's just give it a hotball. Let's say that it makes him the power, he makes himself the power to control time, right? Okay, so Flash, then again, has a scale of speed and his speed um will be at an atom second so by him knowing flash to go at an atom second he would run at an atom second but flash will literally will literally trick him to make him think that he's running at that amount of speed and go above him let's give it a highball let's just say that maxwell knows this right so now he winds up beating freaking flash at the concept of the universe now at his universe so now when he's fighting at dc's concept of the universe and he wants to be that universe he's going to have to balance chaos and order so when he doesn't do that a part of his reality is going to be erased from existence and it's going to be balanced by another reality that has chaos so in actuality him having that magic book like it really really wouldn't affect Batman, Superman, or anybody in the DC universe. Why? Because according to the DC universe, there's a balance in reality. Magic does affect every 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 member of the Justice League, but this magic book, let's just say that it affects them, right? Like, let's just say that this power, like literally, the magic affects them, like Mr. Mixie. So in actuality what it'll do i'm talking too long so basically what this magic book will do with the justice lead is let's just say that it'll pretty much affect them according to how much uh dang what was his name according to how much maxwell knows okay so he has the magic book according to what he knows so in actuality this kid is not omniversal if you say he he can become omniversal and makes himself omniversal, yes, he can. You know, he can become omniversal and he can make himself being the smartest person in the universe. Keep in mind that he is not the one and only. He wasn't the only one with that notebook. That artifact was there for a reason. OK. And evidently, someone may have possessed that artifact, that magic book, before he ever did, before it was ever given to him or ever found. So, we can't go and assume and say that this child is omniversal if they never told you the backstory of this magic book. Okay? So, this guy, Maxwell is a big no-no okay this guy is a big misconclude misconclusive mi yeah like let's say bear with me this guy's a big misconclusion mis uh information misinformation narrow-minded character okay and to me i'll just it it seems like he's a parody so the people that said that he's omniversal were the ones giving spreading misinformation because the game said that he only has the magic book 
and the magic book. He didn't create the magic book. This magic book was given to him. Okay. And because it, it, it was given to him, he does have the ability, like he can write himself being the omniverse. He can be the God of his, of his own universe. So when he create things, it will be done in his image. It ain't going to be done in DC's image because it's done in his image and what's in his image he owns. He doesn't own Batman. He doesn't own Superman. He doesn't own Wonder Woman. So yeah, of course. So when you go with an omniversal battle, can he make Superman weak? No, because he doesn't own Superman. His version of Superman, he can make weak because he owns him because he created him like freaking Freaking, he can't even make Batman weak. He can't even make Flash weak. You see what I'm saying? And so, like I said, by Flash running to the concept of the whole DC universe, he can make himself faster than the Flash. But the problem with that is he can't touch Flash or do anything with him because Flash, it, he doesn't own Flash. He didn't create Flash. Because if he did, then he's going to the concept of the DC universe and he's going to have to fight the connection in the story in the story wise. He's going to have to fight the story that created Flash. OK, like his whole the whole concept of him will have to fight the story of Flash and it, it hits Flash's story will beat him because he didn't create the story that created Flash. He didn't create the entire DC universe that created that that had a story that created flash what allowed him to become the flash barry allen to become the flash so in actuality the story beats maxwell maxwell doesn't have a story that book was just given to him by a father of his and it pretty much just gave him a um whatever he creates is done in his image or the image throughout the universe or anything that he's on so yeah that goes so i'm gonna rebuttal what i said if i did say that the magic book can affect thor affect um spider-man can affect marvel's avengers and the justice league actually it won't it won't affect nobody because the book only affects those that are in in his universe okay the people that are in his universe now, again, the authors never stated anything like that. But when you play the game, it has uh, where Maxwell is in the universe with Batman and Superman and them. Um, and he's fighting Victor Zaz and Victor Zaz killed the police officer. Well, it, it all depends on you. If you want to stop him from killing a police officer, you can create weapons. You can do a lot of stuff. But in actuality, like that was his version of the DC universe. He, I'm just giving a how about, let's just say he created that version of the DC universe. Okay. And it wasn't the actual version of the DC universe. Okay. It was his version and what he thought about it and what he seen of the DC universe. So therefore it wasn't the actual Batman. It wasn't the actual Victor says this was in his image and because when you are a creator you create things the way you see fit doesn't mean it's going to be an actual because if that be the case then you're saying that uh, since you're god he could go in marvel's universe and change up thor because he's a god in his universe when thor was created by another god are you kidding me are you kidding me that's what it means to take things out of context bro like the only type of people that can have that type of power and can go to other people's universes and, and change the concept of their characters if as if they are a god beyond the concept of being a god or what a god is. Like Maxwell would literally, Maxwell is not omniversal, but the book he has is omniversal. It's omniversal in his book so because he puts anybody that possesses the book possesses the power it has and basically come to find out that book scales to omniversal okay in his universe but to compare to any other universe it's like a grain of sand 
he's just an innocent little boy according to the video game he's just an innocent boy and and it claims that when he do dies like he has an unamused uh, an unamused smile on his face you know so like you can actually die in the video game if you want to if you want to you could die in the video game if you want to but you in actuality you really don't have to die but it doesn't define that he can't die like like i said from the beginning like the video game okay it states you don't you could die if you want to die but if you don't want to die you're not gonna die so it's back to what i told like that guy in the early debate from the beginning nobody is not going to want to play a video game where you where where it doesn't have no endings like and i'm not saying that like you can have the option to die if you want but for those of you who don't want to die you could play the game without dying the whole way you know you see what i'm saying but it doesn't mean that maxwell can't die why did they give you the option see here's my question why did they give you the option where you can die in the game and don't and do have life like why would they give you that option why would the creator why would the animator give you that option why because because maxwell it, it was just a game made for kids and you know he isn't actually omniversal the person that created the game is omniversal okay and like like i said from the beginning this maxwell guy is just a big old misconclusion it doesn't have he doesn't have a backstory like the the character does not have no backstory he's almost like santama okay this kid is almost like santama you know a big joke um so i'm gonna and, and for you youtubers out there uh it was confirmed that deadpool killed the whole marvel universe right so i'm gonna be doing a whole video on that so for those of you like so so for those of you who saying you're taking things out of the context and trigon can't beat pennywise how about this deadpool killed the entire marvel universe okay so that means he's omniversal he even killed the one above all are you freaking kidding me this guy killed the one above all he killed everybody he killed the whole mcu okay or that was just a dream but it doesn't matter if it was but if it was a just if it was just a dream and it didn't happen then okay it didn't happen but if he if it wasn't a dream and he actually did then that means deadpool is op oh let's give it a highball which version of deadpool is this the sh powerful version of deadpool or the low weakest version of deadpool well i'm gonna give it a highball let's just say he's the powerfulest version of deadpool so the powerful version of deadpool is stronger and more powerful than the one above all okay way, way more powerful than the one above all they said that he went to an angel and started feeding the angel like the demon or whatever it's flesh and you know he wound up going behind the one above all and just taking him out like he was even literally going out of the comics dr strange literally took deadpool and sent him back to other different comics and it took him a while before he came back and killed dr strange like are you freaking kidding me like seriously are you kidding me so does that mean deadpool is omniversal does it mean deadpool is stronger and more powerful than anybody else in the mcu than everybody in the mcu like literally and it says that he has hysterical strength which means his strength is like above the average human being like literally he could just do things out of nowhere like what so <laughs> so like i said you know you're dealing with narrow-minded people maxwell is just a big old misconclusion and you know it, it, he has a lot of plot holes so for those of you who don't know maxwell can die okay because he's a boy they give you the option to die if you want to so in actuality um like maxwell can die but he only dies if he wants to so in this scenario if maxwell was overwhelmed by a big source of power you see what i'm saying if he was overwhelmed by a big source of power that literally basically tells you with him dying he'll literally give up 
He'll literally give up if there was somebody that was more stronger. This is in the context. This is literally in the context. The video game gives you the option to die or not. So that basically tells you the character can die unless he wants to. So that basically shows you that, like, in a, in a, in a way of speaking, if there was a villain that was way more powerful than he was, that overwhelmed him with strength and all kinds of capabilities, and he faced no match, he will literally give up. If there was something, if he fought like the truth, if he came up against the truth, right, and how much the truth will be him and everything in his universe and like will literally scale his power and time that power plus infinity plus infinity maxwell will be hopeless and he would just freaking give up he will render he would render up bro so i kind of like just i want to push it back when i said that he can die you know because i'm just trying to run into a point so basically i'll just say that he can't die not contradicting myself because the point is that i'm making is staying within the context of what the game is said to be okay because he can die unless he wants to so that basically tells you that if he's fighting a villain that overwhelms him in strength magic and all he will literally give up and this is, in, 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 in actuality, he's just a normal boy with a magic book, an omniversal book. So Maxwell isn't omniversal. The book actually is pretty much like lighting a death note. The book that he holds is omniversal. Just because light is immortal and he have a notebook, it doesn't mean he's immortal. Can light throw away the book and say, hey, drop dead and get somebody to drop dead are you freaking kidding me no 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 the book is omniversal and the, the 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 things that people possess is omniversal okay so his book is omniversal it doesn't mean maxwell is omniversal and i'm going to conclude in this video those that take Maxwell himself being omniversal, those that say that he's omniversal is taking the is taking it literally right out of the context because he's not. And I just basically told you how he was able to do that. If it wasn't for this book that was in his hand, that was given to him, he would never be doing the stuff he's doing. He was just a regular child, a regular kid like his sister until artifacts was given to them so this is the standpoint these narrow-minded youtubers be missing so for those of you who have any questions comments and likes and concerns hit me up man leave the comment below i don't look for likes i don't look for subscriptions i look for people to understand how to actually scale characters evaluate them and you know put them and put them in battle because in actuality this kid will beat nobody okay he will beat nobody bro like if we're talking about the skill of speed he wouldn't beat anybody he wouldn't like nobody he wouldn't beat anybody bro he wouldn't beat anybody because the book only works with based off of his knowledge and his knowledge as a child is everything he could possibly think of in his head. Okay? So even if he does grow into an adult, he may not even get the concept of understanding what it means to have the DC universe balanced by chaos and order. Like, that'll literally split this kid's mind in half. And he can't erase that or change that because he did not create the universe. The only way you can actually change somebody else's writings is if you are beyond the concept of writing itself however he isn't omniversal but the book is but the book is on the scale of omniverse to its own universe again this book only is created because it never showed you that he created three-dimensional two-dimensional 5d five-dimensional characters it doesn't mean that it can't, it can, but it will be done in the image of uh, the book created. So, uh, 
can affect Marvel, can affect DC, Dragon Ball Z, or My Hero Academia. Because, uh, once again, it is like a grain of sand to their universe and their realities. While this kid only has one, one reality. Okay? This kid has one reality. But, let's give it a highball. Let's just say those different versions of the games were different realities. Well, I mean, the DC Universe and superheroes, I just say that he created. So, he created another reality, but it was done in his image. That looked like him. Like, I mean, seriously. But then again, it goes back to what I said from the beginning. This kid is a big old misconclusion. He's pretty much like Santama. So, you know, he shouldn't even be he shouldn't even be in debates. This guy shouldn't even be in debates. And I'm just gonna go and let you guys know. Anybody that uses kids in a debate to characters that don't have any purpose. Yeah, the characters that don't have any purpose or no storyline, he could clearly own if he was omniversal, but he's not. The book is. And the book only does things in its image, and, and it comes only in the image of the universe it pretty much enters. So it pretty much wouldn't even affect Spider-Man or anybody else in the universe because it did not create Spider-Man. Like, are you kidding me? The book, I have to kind of really rejuvenate itself and like freaking like somehow absorb the power of one above all because if this book can absorb the power of one above all then he can make changes with the mcu it can absorb the power of the dc universe then he can make changes okay once it absorbed the power of the dc universe and the concept of the dc universe then he can make changes but that book will have a balance in between chaos and order. So thus far, pretty much like Mixie and Batmite, he will be given a limit. He will literally have a limit. So if he is omniversal, he will have to weigh the balance in between chaos and order. So that means he will literally be omnipotent, but he will be bound by the cosmic laws and the outer laws outside of the DC universe that balances chaos and order. So, if you guys like what, uh, what you heard, stay tuned in this video. Keep watching. Peace. This is your guy, Mr. Evaluator.